what I was going to go over because uh, for, well, since, since we've had this church, I don't know how many years we've had this church, and since we've turned around, uh, you all know that I used, to, uh, I used to sit in the control room with Bridget. And so sitting in the control room, you have a nice view of everyone's expressions. So when Elder Massey would be up here talking about health, I would watch and observe the facial express, expressions on people. And it was like, oh my goodness, here he goes again. Here goes Elder Massey talking about health. There he goes talking about supplements, talking about raw food and talking about this. So I, I had uh, trepidations of even doing this and uh, because I would sit there for years and watch the expressions on the saint's face whenever Elder Massey would bring out health and you know talking about conventional alternative health and conventional medicine and things like that oh i would see some of the faces i mean uh i mean you would just see the countenance on some of you all some of the faces of the saints oh here goes elder massey again talking about health and because you know you know to be honest with you what i'm about to go over is going to be boring for most of you all and it's probably going, it's probably maybe, well, we don't have too many people here right now, but maybe, maybe 2% of the people are going to take heed to whatever I'm talking about. So, you know, this, this is for the two percenters of, of you all out there. So, uh, you can go ahead and get, get ready to get your snooze on. I'm, so, uh, we're going to go over some things that uh, are, uh, we're going to go over a subject that I'm certain that all of us have been touched by, whether it's a family member, an acquaintance, uh, a uh, friend, or even in the news, if you're, you know, if you're uh, up to date and current and listening to uh, the current news, everyone's been affected by this, of what we're about to go over. And it's cancer and you never think that it can happen to you or someone that you know you always think it's going to happen to someone you always think it's going to happen to uh, someone in the distance or maybe an acquaintance someone you might you know you vaguely know but it's a uh, it's a serious serious epidemic that's going on around the world and especially here in the United States and uh, <clears throat> Here's some of the most common types of cancer. Some of you all might have heard of them. Non-melanoma, lung cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, bladder cancer, and uh, you know, kidney cancer, leukemia. You have, you have your skin cancers, and you have your blood cancers, which leukemia is a blood cancer. So you all have probably heard, if you didn't hear of all of them, these are just the mo most common types of cancer. You know, so uh, you've probably heard of them, especially if you've had someone close to you, you've probably heard of one, you know, this brain cancer, I didn't have that down there, but these are just the most popular cancers. Well, what is cancer? According to the National Cancer Institute, cancer is the name given to a collection of related diseases. In all types of cancer, some of the body's cells begin to divide without stopping and spread into surrounding tissues. Many cancers form solid tumors, which are masses of tissue. Cancers of the blood, such as leukemias, generally do not form solid tumors. So that's their definition. You have different science. It's, it's, it's debatable. Some scientists have different definitions, but this is just the basic definition of what they believe cancer is. You know, you have some alternative uh, medicine scientists and that they have their opinions on what cancer, but what they can all agree on is that cancer is devastating, and especially when it's dealing with tumors. Understanding tumors, cancer's tumors are malignant, which means they can spread into or invade nearby tissues. In addition, as these tumors grow, some cancer cells can break off and travel to distant places in the body throughout the blood or the lymph system and form new, new tumors far from the original tumor. 
What they call that is they call that metastasis. Whenever a cancer starts at one place and it spreads to another spot, and it's usually organs, like if it's in the breast, it'll spread to the lungs or it can spread to the brain or it can spread to the liver. So you have your original, so it'd be breast cancer or you ever hear the term metastasis, that's very dangerous because now, now you're dealing, cancer by itself is already dangerous, but when you start dealing with uh, metastasis, it's a whole nother problem. Unlike, unlike malignant tumors, benign tumors do not spread into or invade nearby tissues. Benign tumors can sometimes be quite large. However, when removed, they usually don't grow back, whereas malignant tumors sometimes do. Unlike most benign tumors elsewhere in the body, benign brain tumors can be life-threatening. And as we uh, probably already know, and you've heard Sister Jackson's, uh, Sister Jackson's testimony, Nana's testimony, about her situation with, uh, she had a benign tumor in her brain. And thank the Lord, you know, uh, uh, Elder Massey, the Lord gave Elder Massey the wisdom uh, and the discernment and the answer to give to her as far as the surgeon, the surgeon to uh, perform the surgery on that tumor. So hers wasn't a cancerous tumor, hers was a benign tumor but they can still be life-threatening because of the size of it. Because if I'm not mistaken, her tumor was so large that it was starting, it was causing, was it, Sister Massey, was it causing pain? Was she having pain? Yeah, she, it was causing pain and, man, ringing in her ears. And it was because of, because of the growth of the cancer. So it wasn't malignant, but it was still life-threatening. And it was dangerous simply because of uh, the size of it and the growth of it. I'm gonna talk about some cancer statistics. Every year, cancer claims the lives of more than a half a million Americans. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States, exceeded only by heart disease. And that's gonna be another uh, session that we'll go over in the future, probably in uh, two or three months, if Sister Massey lets me get back here and Troy. Uh, when every, one, uh, one of every four deaths in the United States is due to cancer, according to the CDC, Center for uh, Disease. More Americans die from heart disease, but cancer is rapidly gaining ground on the number one killer. In 22 states, more people died from cancer during 2014 from, than from heart disease. New data from the National Vital Statistics System indicated this is, a, this is a substantial uptick from 2002 when only two states, Alaska and Minnesota, recorded more cancer deaths than heart disease deaths. So that tells you, this is in 2014, so obviously the statistics have increased. So that tells you right then and there that, uh, you know, from 2002 to 2014, you're going, you're going from two states to 22 states. So it's increasing rapidly. This might be due to obesity, which is a risk factor for both heart disease and cancer, explained Dr. Bofetta, a professor of environmental medicine and public health at the ICANN School of, of Medicine at Mount Sinai, who was not involved in the study. Obesity is more likely to cause heart deaths than cancer deaths. Cancer deaths gaining on, cancer deaths gaining on deaths related to heart disease might be explained by the fact that treatment for cancer is more complex and we are not able to treat cancer as effectively as cardiovascular disease yet, uh, Buffetta said. What causes cancer? Well, there's a lot of things that cause cancer, but I'm, well, these are like the three main things that we're going to deal with in this presentation. One is lifestyle, two is foods that we consume, and three, everyday products we use. Lifestyles that can cause cancer. Smoking, we don't have to worry about any of that here. Lung cancer, you've heard that. Excessive alcohol consumption, liver cancer. Overexposure to the sun, melanoma, that's a skin cancer. Unproper, unproperly treated ulcers and gastritis, stomach cancer. 
and receiving the HPV vaccination for women, cervical cancer. So those are just some examples of lifestyles or decisions that we make that can cause cancer. Top 10 cancer-causing foods. I'm about to step on some toes and my toes. And I'm about to do some things here, so don't take it personal. GMOs, I'm pretty certain that if you're, look, if you're looking out for your health, or even if you're not looking out for your health, if you heard anything in the news, you've heard of GMOs, genetically modified foods. The rapidly growing industry of ge genetically modified crops are infiltrating our food supply at an alarming rate. More than 90% of our corn and soy are now genetically modified. This fairly new practice is the source of many debates. Experts agree that adequate testing was not done before GMO foods were added to the ingredient listing of thousands of products. In other words, no one, including the growers and manufacturers of GMO foods, knows the long-term effects effect that they will have on human health. Look for GMO-free labels whenever possible or buy organic, which always means a product, product is not genetically modified. So the reason why they're doing that, obviously, it comes down to money. Whenever you are looking for a, a reason on uh, a sinister reason on why uh, things are done, and, and they're done willfully, and the government knows about it, the FDA knows about it, and scientifically it's been proven that uh, GMOs is detrimental to our health, it comes down to money. So that's not gonna be changed. They can, it doesn't matter how, how much they protest, the, the health advocates, they protest against gem uh, genetically modified foods, and it's not gonna change. So my advice to you is when you're shopping, especially in the produce section, always look for the GMO-free labels. Always check those out. Uh, and who knows, they can be lying on that also. So, you know, some of them are lying. So, so but you gotta at least do your due diligence and do your best not to or limit your, your consumption of GMOs. There's another one I'm about to step on some toes. I'm going to hurt some feelings. Microwave popcorn. Microwave, you all can read this yourself. It's extremely dangerous. As you know, from the chemically lined bag to the actual contents, microwave popcorn is at the center of lung cancer debates around the world. So those of you all that are indulging in microwave popcorn, it's extremely dangerous. And it says right here, make your own organic popcorn the old-fashioned way. It tastes better, doesn't release toxic fumes, and is, healthy, and is a healthier choice for you. So those of you that consume micro, microwave popcorn, uh, this is a food for thought. Canned goods. Most cans are lined with a product called bisphenol A which is BPA, and always, when you go to purchase any canned goods, I don't care if it's fruit, vegetables, just because it's supposedly something healthy, always look for BPA-free canned goods. It'll say BPA-free. You'll, you'll see it on the can or on the side of the can. It won't be really big, but they'll have a label on the back advertising BPA-free. So. Canned goods are good. It's a way of a great way of getting food, and I mean, can if you have the time to can your own food, that's even better, you know, because you know ex exactly what you're getting. You're in control. It's in a in controlled environment. You know what you're canning, and there's many videos on YouTube, or you can find it on the internet, on how to uh, do canning the old-fashioned way with the mason jars, and I'm pretty certain that some of you all have done it before and probably are still doing it. I know Sister Jones, is, uh, she's uh, adept on uh, doing some canning. I know Sister Thomas, she's canned in the past. I don't know if she still does, but uh, canning is the way to go. But canned goods are also good because of the great shelf life, but make sure you purchase BPA-free cans, canned foods. 
grilled meats. While grilled food can taste delicious, scientists have discovered that preparing meats in this way, especially processed meats like hot dogs, re release, releases a carcinogen called uh, heterosalic aromic amines. I probably butchered that name. When, the, when you grill the red meat to the point of well done, it changes the chemical and mo molecular structure of the meat. You're better off bacon, broiling, or preparing meat in a skillet than on the grill. Uh, some of you all probably didn't know that. It's, or maybe it's all right to do it once in a while. <laughs> we know we love our grilled meats. We know we love our grilled steaks. Well, you don't want to overindulge in grilled red meats. Refined sugar. I know everyone's heard this before. The biggest cancer cause in food by far is high fructose corn syrup, which, you know, if you see a lot of times they, they won't spell it out. They'll just have HFCS. In other words, it's refined sugar. Even brown sugar is highly refined white sugar with some of the removed molasses added back in for flavor and color. Refined sugars and foods made from them are the source of major insulin spikes and feed the growth of cancer cells. If you didn't already know, I've talked about it uh, previously, how cancer cells love sugar. Um, they love sugar and it feeds on sugar. It causes tumors to grow and it causes them to grow rapidly. So you want to stay away from, as much as you can, stay away from refined sugar. What are the alternatives? I, me personally, I like to use stevia, liquid stevia. Some people can't, don't like the taste. Me personally, I, I, liquid stevia, the powdered stevia I can't, but they've, uh, with the process and uh, methods that they've been u using lately, at least from my taste buds, uh, liquid stevia is, to me, it's right there with sugar. I mean, I, me personally, I almost can't tell the difference, you know. When they first started processing stevia, uh, they, it had, for some reason, it had a, a, a strong aftertaste. But now the liquid stevia, you can get it from Honest Weight, you can get it from uh, most of your health food stores. Whole Foods, they'll have a liquid stevia, and they usually have it in like a glycerin uh, 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 liquid. And it's usually calorie, calorie uh, free, uh, no carbs. And that's a great, that's a great uh, alternative to refined sugar. And if you must have your sugar, I would use raw, unprocessed, and unheated honey. I would use that and contrast to uh, refined sugar. Because we know we, are, we have a lot of addicts in here, sugar addicts. Salted, pickled, and smoked foods. These products typically contain preservatives such as nitrates, which are intended to prolong shelf life. The additives used in processed foods can accumulate in the body over time. Eventually, such toxins cause damage at the cellular level to lead to diseases like cancer. So, so these, these, these are things that if you want to eat, occasionally you don't want to make this like you don't want to be drinking soda every day or eating smoked foods every day or anything that's uh, heavily salted or pickled because it does increase your chances of getting cancer now when it, now don't misconstrue saying you know of what I'm saying you can eat these things occasionally but to eat these things what we're going over or to consume these things and use these products every single day and it's a major part of your diet, that's when it becomes a problem. Because as you can see, it says, the additives used in the processed foods can accumulate in your body over time. So you don't go to McDonald's and have a, a Big Mac meal, a number one or a number two, and then the next day you get cancer. It doesn't happen that way. These are lifestyle, these are, when someone gets cancer, it's usually a breakdown of the immune system, and it's usually something that's been done over time because all of us have cancer cells in our body, but every day our immune system fights it off. 
So most of our immune systems are strong enough to fight off the cancer cells that, so that they don't grow out of control and multiply. And then some of us, over time, we accumulate these toxins in our body and the immune system is compromised, whereas though it's broken down and it's not able to protect the body in, in the way which uh, God created the immune system to protect our body. Because to be honest with you, a lot of these things that we're consuming are man-made, and it was never meant for man to consume in any ways. So when you're going to uh, eat and consume some of these things, make sure, you, uh, make sure you do it as little as possible. Soda and carbonated beverages. Well, everyone knows that soda's filled with high fructose corn syrup which is, and some people think, a lot of people think that, well, I'm, I drink soda, but I drink diet soda. Well, diet soda is even worse. It's worse than the high fructose uh, corn syrup because a lot of them are sweetened with artificial sweeteners, which is and it's, it's man-made. Aspartame and some of these other artificial sweeteners, which are extremely dangerous. Uh, I can go over that in detail about these artificial, highly processed uh, food products that are man-made at another time. But don't think that you're in the clear when it comes to drinking soda uh, just because you drink diet soda, because diet soda is extremely dangerous, especially to be drink, uh, uh, you know, to be consumed on a regular basis. White flour. So this means that we have to shut down Goodway Bakery. But, uh, but all jokes aside, white flour is a refined all nutritional value and all the nutritional value is removed. And that's why it's white, because you know, it's removed. So consuming, consuming uh, it's nice to do a little research on Goodway Bakery once in a while. I'm gonna do some research. I do research here and there. I try to do some research. But to make that your everyday, a part of your everyday diet, Extremely dangerous as far as white flour is concerned. And white flour is usually in all baked goods. So if you're not wearing white flour, mainly it's all baked goods white flour is used in. Farm the fish. I know we have a lot of people here that love their seafood and love their fish. Well, commercial fish farming involves raising an incredible number of fish for money, such as salmon in a crowded environment. More than 60% of the salmon consumed in the United States comes from farming operations where they are treated with antibiotics, pesticides, and other carcinogenic chemicals to try and control the bacterial, viral, and parasitic outbreaks that result from cramming so many fish in a small place. Farm fish also don't have as much omega-3 as wild salmon. So most of the fish, as you can see, 60% of the salmon that we consume, because I know everyone loves salmon here. I can guarantee you most of the salmon that you purchase, it's farm race. And what they do is they use, they feed the salmon, they, they feed it a dye. We'll go over that in a, another time when we're going over processed foods, but they feed it a dye, which gives it that nice pink color, which looks, which makes it look authentic. Yeah, I mean, it's authentic fish, but it's not, obviously it's not raised right, you know, it's, it has the pesticides and antibiotics uh, in it. And uh, here's some of the most common co uh, farm fish, common farm fish, salmon. I know a lot of people in here love the tilapia. I'm doing a good thing, I'm eating tilapia. Tilapia is trash. It tastes good, but it's trash. Sea bass, I love me some catfish. And, but it's hard to get wild caught catfish. And you're gonna pay an arm and a leg try to, to try to get uh, wild caught catfish. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know if I've seen wild caught catfish around here in the Capital District. I know when I was in New Orleans, I've seen it. I've seen it when I was in uh, New Orleans. Let me see. I don't know, there's not too many places where you can get wild caught catfish. And you got your cod. So these are the main culprits as far as and the most common farm fish that you can get. So buyer beware, especially when you're at restaurants. And if you wanna be sure, if you're ordering salmon 
if you're ordering salmon at a, a restaurant and it doesn't advertise that it's wild caught, hi, Shell. If you order salmon, if you order salmon at a restaurant, uh, always ask the waiter if it's wild caught to ask the chef. Because usually if it's not advertised in, in the menu that, uh, that it's wild caught, then it's not. It's farm raised. Hydrogenated oils. Vegetable oils are chemically extracted from the source, chemically treated, and more chemicals are added to change the smell and taste. They're packed with unhealthy omega-6 fats that Americans already consume way too much of and have been proven to alter the structure of our cell membranes. So when you eat fried chicken or any fried foods, that's what you're consuming right there. Next thing we want to go over is the products that we use that can cause cancer. Cosmetics. We don't have to worry about most of the men. This is uh, most of the women with your makeup. Uh, cosmetics come under the purview of the FDA the Food and Drug Administration, but they are not as strictly regulated as drugs. Since they are mainly applied externally to enhance appearance, their use is considered incidental and temporary. If at all any testing is done on, on their safety, it is mainly to test for pain, burning sensation, changes in skin color, and other localized allergic reactions. So you women have to be careful. Um, we shouldn't have any men in here wearing makeup. So. You women have to be careful with the cosmetics. I'm pretty certain that they have some alternatives. Um, I think Kiki might use alternatives or Sister Massey, they may use alternatives. I don't know. But if you want to know some alternatives, uh, check with them or you can do a Google search and they might have some alternatives as far as uh, enhancing your beauty for the, you ladies, maybe some men. Some of you are guilty of this next one. Hair dyes. <laughs> Hair dyes have been linked to cancer risk. But any other day, cosmetics contain the carcinogens like form formalide, benzene, toline, and uh, 1 4 uh, 1 4. Dioxide. Fragrances used in these products are particularly suspicious because their manufacturers do not even share their formula with the cosmetic product companies. Even those who claim to be natural or organic may not be, be all that safe. So you all that like to dye your hair, we have some people in here that are guilty of that. And women, and maybe some men. But uh, be careful of the dyes that you use. You want to use some, there's some natural alternatives out there that you, uh, you want to use. And uh, I wouldn't know anything about it, but I think Shell, Sister, Sister Wooten might be able to help you all out in that situation as far as alternative uh, dyed hair, uh, alternatives for dyeing your hair. So uh, be careful, uh, those that like to dye your hair on a regular basis to cover up uh, cover up some imperfections. Candles. Well, I think uh, Elder Massey and Minister Tristan went over there. I think can candles are demonic. I, I think, I don't know. I thought I heard in one of the, uh, I thought they did their research and they said that candles were demonic. So, well anyways, candles have lighted people's homes. There's a little history and candles have lighted people's homes for centuries since they were first made by Romans and Egyptians. In the age of electric lights, Candles are used mainly as accents for their soft glow and romantic feel. If candles are old, if candles of old were fashioned from nuts and fats, animal fats and beeswax until the much neater paraffin wax developed from petroleum became popular in the 1850s. This made candle making easy and candles cheap. So you see, but it seems this pristine, pristine blue-tinted white wax is not all that neat if recent studies are anything to go by. The fumes released as these paraffin wax burns contain carcinogens such as toline, 
aldehydes, ketones, and other fossil fuel components which can build up in the house. So basically, the candles that we use, you get from Walmart or you get from those romantic places or wherever, and with that, and you know, they smell good, they smell good, they look good and everything, but they're emitting off, uh, they're emitting off carcinogens in your home. So they're not, they're, uh, they are definitely something to uh, think about, if you, those of you that are still using candles. But I, I don't think too many people are using candles because I, I do remember Elder Massey and Minister Tristan going over it, talking about, uh, and they did some research on it, about candles. So we're going to beat a dead horse. We don't, no one in here uses candles. Air fresheners. Air fresheners, the same thing because of the chemicals that they use in air fresheners. And these are some of the chemicals that are emitted from air fresheners. Toothpaste. If you're not using an all-natural toothpaste or if you're not using you know, your basics like baking soda, natural baking soda or coconut oil, your toothpaste is contaminated. Because brushing our teeth with a dollop of toothpaste twice a day or more is necessary for oral health, or so we have been told. But there's a study, there's a studied silence regarding the safety and efficacy of this ingredients and in our, uh, of the ingredients in our toothpaste. Take the case of fluoride. So we are, you've probably heard about that in the news of how dangerous fluoride is, fluoride is in uh, toothpaste and in our drinking water. So I would suggest if you're looking out for your health, to use an alternative, an all-natural alternative uh, uh, toothpaste to keep your teeth clean. Uh, those, we're not going to dwell on this too much. You can talk to Sister Kiki on birth control. She might have known some alternatives. That's not, this is not my department, but I thought I should uh, share that information of those of you that it's applicable to. Sunscreen. Now, those of you all that like to stay in the sun, now, it's good to be in the sun because of vitamin D. Obviously, you know, it's good to be in the sun because that's where you, you know, we can process and get vitamin D. But overexposure to the sun, laying out on the beach, and things like that, and some of you all that are uh, uh, melon-challenged, that, uh, you know, the uh, lighter persuasion, uh, you have to be careful. There are some alternatives, but it's, I'm not saying to stay out of the sun, but overexposure to the sun, that's where, you get, that's where the skin cancer does come in. And people trying to avoid skin cancer, they use sunscreen, which is, which is uh, loaded with chemicals, as you can see. Other causes of cancer, chemical pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and disinfectants have been in use for so long and in so many places that many of us don't even give a second thought on the ongoing damage these poisons are causing the environment and us. Chemicals like carcinogens, radiation, obesity, hormones, chronic inflammation, smoke and viruses, and a number of other factors have been found to be cancer causing. Another thing is burnt foods. So be careful of you uh, cooks or novice cooks that burn your food or overcook your food. It, that's a, that's a, a problem. Uh, if you're going to eat any red meat, if you're going to cook a steak, my recommendation for my research is to eat it rare or medium rare. This thing, uh, well done, it's not good. Any well done meat, especially red meats, are definitely not good. And it falls under the, uh, it falls under the, uh, the, the guidelines of burnt foods. Uh, well done. I know growing up, uh, Elder Massey didn't know any better. And so it was like a ritual. Every Sunday we would go to Ponderosa. And uh, he's, I think they're still around, but not around here. It's Ponderosa and Bonanza, the same, same company. Well, it's a little, 
it's a uh, little cheap steakhouse. We thought it, we thought it was a big time steakhouse growing up, but every Sunday we looked forward to going to uh, Ponderosa. And one thing my father, my father did is he did not see my father grew up in the hood. Uh, I guess he grew up he grew up in the hood, so he didn't have a salad until you know he's told you all until he was what 21, and he wasn't privy uh, to having uh, steak, salads, and different things like that. So he didn't know any better. So he would never let any of us get any steaks, anything less than well done. It had to be well done and almost burnt. So one time we went, I remember uh, going to Ponderosa, and we put our orders in, and I guess they said well done, and they got the order mixed up. And they bought my little ribeye out. They bought, or my, I think it was a sirloin. And that thing was medium rare. Oh, that thing tastes so good. I mean, it was the best steak I've ever tasted in my life because the only thing I had at that time was well done. And it was nice and pink in the middle, it was juicy. And so my father got with me, he said, what in the world? He said, what in the world's happening? Oh, my father got that steak and chewed the, uh, he chewed the waiter out and, and sent it back. And so I was back to getting well done steaks until I was old enough to actually order for myself. But uh, I think me, Shell, and Buff, we all, we all I think, I think they, they would sneak sometimes and get medium rare, but uh, it, it tastes a lot different and it's a lot healthier. If you're going to eat it, it's a lot healthier than well done. So my recommendation is do not get any meats. If you order meats or if you cook, do not cook your food well done because it falls right under the category of burnt foods. Any burnt foods, especially meats. Hot tea. This is probably a stunner for some of you all. The health benefits of hot tea are drawing people to the habit of drinking freshly brewed tea which has been an age-old tradition in many community, uh, communities across the world. While tea is packed with antioxidant power, drinking it piping hot may give you cancer of the esophagus. So it's not saying you can't drink hot tea, but drinking extremely hot tea has been known to give people, have people have, uh, have gotten cancer of the esophagus. Researchers have come to this conclusion because higher incidence of esophageal cancer in Asian and Middle Eastern populations that habitually drink hot tea. Smoking and alcohol consumption are considered the main risk factors of this cancer in the U.S. and Europe. But its occurrence in females of these traditional communities who generally don't drink or smoke has shifted the focus to tea drinking. Physical damage to the lining of the esophagus is thought to, to be the risk factor here. So let your tea or coffee cool down before you sip it. So it's anything, whether it's tea, coffee, or if you drink your, uh, your uh, soup, be careful. Let things cool down before you consume it. Question, why doesn't everyone get cancer? The reason everyone doesn't get cancer all the time is because your immune system has the ability to recognize each and every one of those aberrant cells and remove them from your body. If it's functioning properly, that's what a healthy immune system does. So I know we all know people that uh, they can do, have you heard, heard of people or you might know them, they can do whatever they want to do. Smoke, they can drink, the, uh, lay out in the sun, do drugs, and they seem like they never get sick. Well, they've been blessed, if you want to call it, blessed with an immune system that's able to fight off uh, these cancer cells once they try to rear their ugly heads. You know, I've heard of people, I've heard of people that have did whatever they wanted to do, lived a reckless life, drank, smoked, did drugs, did whatever, and lived, lived in their 80s and 90s, just did whatever they wanted to do, and, and at excess, because they ended up having a strong immune system. That's the only way you can explain it. And the immune system kept them healthy. And then there's some of us that try to eat healthy and still get sick, or you do minimal. 
and you still get sick. So the key is a strong immune system. What is the best cancer protocol? People always ask, what is the best cancer protocol out there? Well, the best cancer protocol is prevention. If you don't have cancer, which I hope and I pray, and we never know what's going on in our body, but uh, you never know what's going on in your body, but as far as we know, we don't have cancer, so the best protocol is prevention. I'm going to give you some Bridget Renee health recommendations. And we call it stop, start, and supplement, the three S's. The next one is a Bill Henderson protocol, which is a very, pro, uh, very good protocol, which has helped thousands of people. Let's go over the Bridget Renee health protocol. Stop. The first S is stop. Stop consuming cancer-causing foods and drinks. Stop drinking tap water. Stop using cancer-causing products. And stop being sedentary. And when I say stop consuming cancer-causing foods and drinks, it doesn't mean you have to stop it altogether, but you definitely want to limit it. But I would highly recommend that you totally eliminate drinking tap water. Start. Start consuming. Our recommendation is start consuming at least 75% raw vegetables and fruits. Start eating organic if you can afford it. Start eating only grass-fed and pastured meats. Start eating only wild-caught fish. Start juicing. Start fasting or dry fasting periodically. Start exercising regularly. Start detoxing colon, kidney, gallbladder, and liver every four months. That's what you should start to do. Supplement. This is a Bill Henderson protocol. You want to use a supplement called beta-gluten, which, which helps to optimize the immune system. Vitamin D3, barley grass, green tea extract, lysine, proline, rose hips, vitamin C, and flaxseed oil, which is part of the Budwig diet. And these supplements used together have been proven to uh, reverse uh, stage three cancer in thousands of uh, cancer patients that have tried this protocol. And it has ke helped keep cancer at bay from people that don't have cancer in thousands of using this Bill Henderson protocol. One good thing about it is getting and purchasing all of those supplements, it's inexpensive. The therapeutic dosage, dosage for this uh, protocol, the Bill Henderson protocol is for eight weeks. The maintenance dosage, uh, after the eight weeks, you want to use that maintenance dosage indefinitely for optimal health. This treatment is rated a stage three alternative cancer treatment and it's not recommended for advanced cancer patients. That means like stage four, uh, metastasis, you know, where the cancer is metastasized, or late stage four, you know, this is not going to be strong enough for that. And these are for people that are uh, already healthy right now or think they're healthy, or if you're up to about a stage three and the cancer hasn't gotten out of control. And for, these, for this supplement list right over here, the beta gluten of vitamin B3, barley, grass, green tea extract, lysine, proline, rose hips, vitamin C, and the flaxseed oil. I can give, if you're interested, I know most of you aren't interested, and I just bored you all to death, but you can contact me at mauricekmassey at gmail.com, and I will email you all a list of all the things, the exact, the exact, uh, dosage to take, a place where you can get them, the most inexpensive place to purchase them from, and the Budwig protocol, uh, which is included, and in, it's included in the Henderson uh, protocol. The green, actually the green tea extract 
the lysine, proline, the rose hips, and the vitamin C, that's actually uh, from Dr. Rath. So this is a combination. Bill Henderson took a combination of the Budwig diet and his own, and he combined them, and he calls it the Bill Henderson uh, protocol. So uh, I've uh, thank you for your time, and uh, hopefully, oh, questions? Uh, okay, Sister Massey wants me to uh, answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions about what we went over? As far as the supplements, you don't have. You can contact me via email, and uh, I will just email you the list and the protocol in detail and how to follow it if you're interested. But if you have any other questions of what we went over, uh, please feel free to ask these questions right now. Ty, you don't, you, you can't ask any questions. I don't trust you. Any questions? Uh, Brother Dunley has a question. Uh, when you do barbecue, when, when you, you know, you go out and barbecue, and you know, like some people like a little charcoal here when you flip it on one side, burn it, you know. Yeah, char charred, charred, anytime you have charred meat, charred meat, it's dangerous. My, my suggestion, because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm just going to just tell you me. You just try to limit it. You don't want to do barbecue all the time, and you don't want to char and See, black folks, us black folks, this is the way black folks are. We've been raised, from my experience, me being black and having a black family and, and, uh, and uh, kinfolk from down south, we like to overcook our meat. And that's the way I was raised, but I have changed my ways in the last 20-something years as far as burnt and overcooked foods. I've changed my ways. My palate never liked, to be honest with you, I never really liked uh, overcooked meat anyways. It was just something that I didn't know any better. I didn't cook. My parents cooked, and that's the way my father was raised, and, and they overcooked meat all the time. You ever see the people, they like frying chicken, and they're like, the, I like to fry it real hard. No, you like to dry it out. See, black people like to dry food out, and in the process of drying food out, they like to burn food, especially meats when it comes to meats. And so it is dangerous. So I'm glad that my palate, I have, I have a palate for uh, medium rare uh, meats. So, uh, but I would say, I still love me some barbecue. I'm, I'm not gonna eat charred foods. I stay away from charred foods, but I do, know, I, I do know that black folks love charred foods and they like to char their barbecue. I say it's okay once in a while, but it's not something you wanna consume all the time. You wanna limit it. Next. Sister, uh, Sister Banks. You were saying that white flour wasn't basically good because everything is bleached out of it and you um, don't have um, the nutrients in it. What's a good flour to use? I tried some organic flour in to make pancakes, it doesn't taste good to me at all. I can, so. uh, if you, uh, to remind me, uh, I will check my email, because if, uh, I'm not gonna remember if you ask me, so that's why I have the email up here. I can send you some alternatives. Uh, Minister Tristan has some alternative flowers. He just talked to me about it uh, maybe two weeks ago, about an alternative flower that you can use. And I know of some other alternative flowers that you can use for pancakes. I haven't tasted them, but they say they're delicious. They say they're delicious. So, but Minister Tristan just talked to me about a alternative that's a lot healthier than, uh, than the white flour. But if you email me, and I'll see it in the email, I will send you some flowers that I've gotten, I've heard some raving reviews about that they use it in place of white flour for, for pancakes, waffles, and breads that's delicious because a lot of that alternative stuff, it's healthier for you, but it's disgusting. I hate to say it, it's, it's nasty. Next, anyone else? I'm not asking for myself, but for some people. Um, did you forget to put um, 
raw sugar up there, or did I miss that you can have that? No. For people in the bakery who like to drink coffee? Um, it wasn't yeah. for me. As, as you're talking about it's an alternative to, uh, an alternative to, uh, to white sugar or high fructose? High, high corn sugar? Yes, raw sugar. Um, yeah, you can, it's, it's an alternative, but you still have to watch your waistline using raw sugar, and it will still, it's still going to spike your insulin levels whether you have diabetes or not. And when your insulin levels are spiked, that's when you're most vulnerable for uh, your, your immune system is down, and that's when you're most vulnerable for cancer cells to get out of control. So that's why I say limited. No one's going, I'm not being unrealistic where you're just going to totally eliminate, you know, eating bad here and there. But, you know, you want to treat yourself here and there. But for the most part, you want to eat good. Want to, I would do a suggestion of a 5-2 protocol. The 5-2 protocol is eat really good for five days, and then you have two bad days. But then some people go overboard during those, those two bad days, they'll get out of control. Or you eat really good on six days. You know, six days, you eat really good, even better. Six days, realistically, eat good for six days. Eat 75% raw vegetables and fruits, do your juicing, and stay away from the processed foods, and uh, stay away from the things that we talked about in here and do the things that uh, I talked about in here. And then on that sixth day, which could be on a Sunday, after Elder Massey's up here for three hours, <laughs> then you can let your hair down, you can kick your shoes off, and you can do what you gotta do. <laughs> and I don't think you can do too much damage in one day. So that's a suggestion. Lurs. Praise the Lord. I'm Praise guessing Lord. that white rice goes along with white flour and white sugar. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, yeah it but, definitely is. But, Usually um, they say is stay away from whites yeah. as far as foods are concerned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but my question was... No pun intended. <laughs> one of the causes of cancers is chronic is what? One of the causes of cancers is chronic inflammation. What yes. causes that? And what are some of the things we can do to reduce that? Uh, some food, is it exercise? Well, chronic uh, inflammation is my question. Well, usually uh, chronic inflammation usually comes from a lot of the foods that we eat. And, uh, and supplementation, because food isn't as nutritious and it doesn't carry the nutritious value that it did 50, 50 to 75 years ago, supplementation is mandatory. It's mandatory. Um, years ago, before I was born, 50, 50 years ago, 75 years ago, 100 years ago, you were able to eat a healthy diet without supplementation because all, and certain foods to, uh, to battle chronic diseases and things like that, inflammation like that, like we're talking about, uh, because the soil, because of the soil uh, wasn't uh, contaminated with the spraying and with the pesticides and the herbicides that they're using today. And 100 years later, you know, the soil has lost, has lost, uh, the nutrients that it did have in it and it's contaminated. So it's mandatory and it's uh, essential that you uh, supplement, you have to supplement. You know, some people say, well, I'm eating healthy and this and that. I highly recommend anyone, uh, everyone to supplement because regardless to how good you eat, regardless to how clean you think you're eating, the food just doesn't have the uh, nutritional value that it had in the past doesn't have it so you can battle that and exercise does battle inflammation also Good. Um, vegetarian diet I'm not a vegetarian but uh, what are the what does research show about vegetarian diets um, 
vegetarian diet, I, I want to go over that, and I, I want to go over that in detail in, uh, in another session. But Elder Massey's been doing some research, and I've done some research, and I've always known I mess around with my parents. But vegetarian diet is actually a it's a made up diet. It's 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 actually made up. Man from the beginning of time has always consumed the meat and fish, and that's where they've gotten their omega threes and they've gotten essential uh, vitamins from consuming meat. Uh, unprocessed meat, wild caught fish, and uh, pastured meat, grass fed meats. So when, they, when you see the studies that talk about how bad meat is or how bad fish is, it's talking about today's meats, the way they're raising it. So when, and whenever they do those double blinded tests and things like that, they don't give you the details. The meats that they're doing these studies on uh, are meats that have been contaminated with antibiotics and hormones because they're raising these animals, whether it's uh, chickens or poultry or it's, uh, uh, you know, it's pork or if it's cattle, they're raising them in confined areas and they're using the cheapest feed to feed them and they're using chemicals and they're using uh, they're using hormones to increase their growth so that they can grow faster and the faster they grow the sooner they can slaughter them and they can raise more and the more money they make because it's all about the dollars and cents so no one ever thought that they devised well let's come up with uh, I don't think I'm not one of those that buy into the notion that they came up with a plan. Now, I believe they do want, there's population control. But as far as this is concerned, a lot of these things are concerned. It's about money. I don't think that they came up with an idea of we want to inject these chickens and these pigs and uh, these cattle with steroids and hormones so that we can contaminate the people. They just didn't care. So these are and these are, this is what we, it's resulting in, it's resulting in not only them injecting it, but it gets into the meat, and we consume the meat, it's contaminating us. So this, you know, I want to go over that, and El Massey might touch base on it sometime before I do, but uh, yeah, eating meat is healthy. Eating clean and wholesome, grass-fed and wild, grass-fed pastured meats and wild-caught fish, it is healthy for you. You know, uh, you want to obviously have temperance as far as that's concerned, but it is healthy for you when you're eating the right type of meats. The wrong type of meats are not good for you, and a vegetarian diet, a completely uh, straight-up vegetarian, vegan diet is not healthy also because there's a lot of things. Have you ever, have you ever seen some of these uh, so-called real vegetarians or raw foodists and see how they are? One thing that they're deficient in is vitamin Bs. They don't get a sufficient vitamin Bs in their health. So they're living, they're eating pretty good, but there are essential vitamins and fats that they're missing out on that meats, uh, good meats and fish contain that you can't get out of vegetables and fruits. Uh, one last one, if I could. A raw blue agave is a sweetener? Yeah, that's... You have to be careful with that because majority of the blue agave that you're getting here in the United States, even if it says it's organic, they process it so much that it's, it's, it's corn syrup. It's high fructose corn syrup. So that's why I don't recommend it. I, I highly don't recommend it. You might as well just get corn syrup if you're going to uh, use that blue agave. And they have such a great marketing and advertising uh, 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 advertising uh, uh, thing on that and you'll see it all in the health stores and you'll see it on the health foods sweetened by uh, organic blue agave it's been processed so much that all of the good nutrients are out of it and it's left with nothing but sugar so it's basically just like eating high fructose uh, high fructose corn syrup that's the, it's the same thing except more expensive a lot more expensive so I would save my money on that if you want to use a sweetener and you don't want to use the liquid stevia, which I prefer, and which is calorie-free 
and it's actually beneficial to your health, I would use a raw, unfiltered uh, honey uh, as far as the sweetener is concerned. Maple syrup also, yes. But you're going to have to pay. You usually, as far as health foods are concerned, you're going to get what you pay for. When it comes to health foods and supplements, you're going to get what you pay for. So if, you, if you're going to get maple syrup, it's going to be quite expensive. If you see it's not expensive and you think you're getting a good deal, then turn the other way and run and run fast with your wallet because you'll be wasting your time with uh, maple syrup. Because a lot of that, you have to do your due diligence. Uh, maple syrup is good, but you have to make sure you're getting the right maple syrup and you have to make sure, unfortunately, you have to make sure you're paying a lot of money for it, for just like a little, a little glass uh, jar of it. It's expensive. It's extremely expensive to make, and it's expensive. Sister uh, Caroline. Um, you were talking about tea. Now, I drink green tea, but my doctor stopped me from green, drinking green tea. She said, if I had to have it, just drink one cup a day because it has so much uh, in the tea that it's harmful for me. Yeah. Uh, what, did, what did he say? What, what, what did your doctor say it was harming? I've uh, never, I've, did a lot of research, I've done a lot of research on green tea. I've yeah. never heard of such a thing. So your doctor's misinformed. Let me share, I, I'm not knocking doctors. I'm not gonna knock doctors, they're very intelligent and they know what they know. But when doctors, when doctors go to med school, they know very little about nutrition. Very, very little. I've dealt with a lot of doctors before as a patient and as a caregiver. And when, you, when it comes to nutrition, they don't have any training on nutrition. So they might see, they might see a, uh, a bogus study out there or something like that and it might be that I'm unaware of. They put a lot of misinformation out there, but green tea is very beneficial as far as drinking. Uh, it's it's uh, antioxidant. And when we were talking about green tea, we weren't talking about or the tea in particular. We weren't talking about the tea and the coffee by itself, because coffee, to be honest with you, if you get good organic coffee, it's been beneficial to you also. We we're talking about the heat of it the heat of it, when drinking it piping hot, will cause damage to the lining of your esophagus. And that's where the incident of esophageal cancer is very high in those areas. So it's not, it's not necessarily, it's not the tea and it's not the coffee, it's the temperature of the tea and the coffee that you're consuming. Um, yeah, I have a question about the, the grilled meat. Is it the same grilling as if you bake it? Bacon is a lot better. Just bacon. Yeah, bacon is a lot better. Okay. Yes, uh, bacon is definitely a lot better. Okay. And you can still have your grilled meats, but if you <laughs> if you want your grilled meats, like I said, I would recommend if you want to on your cheat day have you a nice uh, a nice uh, Delmonico steak. I would recommend you get a a medium rare steak. But bacon is a lot better, and it's a lot and it's uh, uh, a lot of less, it's less, uh, less problems for you as far as bacon is concerned. Now you might want to dry it out. I, you still don't want to dry it. I wouldn't recommend that you don't dry it out. You know, like us, you know, as black folks like to dry things out. They don't like to leave any juice in the meat. But uh, yeah, bacon is a better option. The other question is, um, I heard somewhere about as far as flour, you can grind certain seeds into a powder and then yes, you, a, you can. Is it like pumpkin yes, you can. seeds or something? You can, uh, uh, YouTube, all, yes. Yeah, Minister Tristan, as far as the flowers concerned, I haven't used a lot of them. Minister Tristan and Sister Marquita and Sister Massey, they know more about it. But you can do a simple Google research, uh, Google uh, search, and you can find it. All the information that I'm giving you all, it's free. You can get it on Google, and I'll tell you what's great. YouTube is great. I mean, for, uh, you know, as far as research is concerned, people have never, 
had uh, uh, the information uh, at their fingertips like the way they do in this day and time. I've dealt with doctors. I've dealt with doctors uh, that have been practicing medicine for years. And if they don't have, and if they don't have the answer to something, even if something that they should know, you know where they go? I've seen them do it. They go to Google. I've seen them go to YouTube. There's, there's a plethora of information out there out there, you just have to go through it and you have to spend the time and have a passion to, you know, to whatever you want to do. You, if you want to make soap there's, and be an expert at it, there's many people out there on YouTube that are expert soap makers and you can, just, and you can become a soap maker. You want to learn how to play the piano, go to YouTube. Anything out there, if you want to learn how to make your own flour and grind with nuts, go to YouTube. It's a blessing. I mean, it can be a blessing. Uh, you know, like, like, there's a lot of good in things. Like you say, there's a lot of good things on uh, Facebook, and then there's a lot of mess on Facebook. Elder Mass and Sister Massey went over that. So the internet has some great things on there, and I would take advantage of YouTube. And they have a lot of good things out there. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are much more informed than, as far as all t your health is concerned, than your own doctors, and they're giving that information to you free on the internet. You just have to have a passion and just uh, a desire to go through it and, and be able to uh, use some common sense and be able to decipher what is, uh, uh, be able to separate the, uh, the meat from the bones, you know, because there's some misinformation out there and there's some mess out there and then there's some good stuff out there. So a lot of, uh, I would use the internet that's where I learned a lot of my stuff. I learned a lot of things, well, you know, as far as the cancer is concerned, I, le I learned a lot of things hands-on uh, with Bridget, but I confirmed a lot of things doing my own research and doing hundreds and hundreds of hours of research. So, but the internet is out there, it's all free, you know, and I would, I would definitely use as far as, you know, wanting to Want to, wanting to change your diet and things like that. There's great recipes on YouTube and on the internet, but I would really use YouTube. There's a lot of great things out there. Mess out there, but a lot of, a lot of that stuff is good out there. Anybody else? Well, I want to thank you all for being patient with me and, uh, and uh, giving me the opportunity to, to uh, speak to you all. And hopefully I'll see you all in a couple of months. Praise the Lord.